Welcome back. So first up this week, i um, actually been working again a little bit on Monday with um, experimenting with some changes to uh, the gear retraction mechanism. So what I did was I actually changed the flow control valves that I had and I changed the orientation on those. So um, instead of having them preventing or slowing the flow of um, fluid coming out of the pump, I've actually got them on the other side, like on the return to the pump. So when you're pushing uh, fluid into the gear cylinders um, to lift the gear up, it's actually putting pressure on the side of the cylinders that holds the gear down. And so uh, my goal was to try and make it you know, smooth out um, by doing that. And as you can see, I've made some progress here and I still had to adjust the, um, the pressure switches there. And in this case here, what I first did it, um, the pressure got too much because of the back pressure I'm holding now that the uh, cutoff switch engaged. So I just had to go through and uh, do some adjustments with that. And I've also decided that I'm gonna um, move or just set up that um, the speed controller for the pump so it's only controlling the speed on the down cycle because the down cycle was happening way too quick before and uh, that would just basically throw the gear down like crazy. So I'm gonna have it just on the down cycle and be able to you know, slow the pump way down so when the gear comes down, it doesn't come down so aggressively. And then the up cycle, I'll have it so uh, it's just running full power to the pump and I'll control the speed uh, by the amount of back pressure on the, um, on the cylinders for the down cycle. So as I said just now, um, when it's pumping to lift it up, the um, fluid in the other side of the cylinders will be under pressure still. And so that'll actually mean it'll come up um, more gradually and not uh, as aggressively. But anyway, um, you know, spent quite a bit of time working on that. And uh, here you can see, I'm just getting it to go up the last little bit there. And uh, you'll see in a little bit later in this video, um, the improvements have been made after I did a lot more sort of tuning on it. And over the weekend, I was working on quickly putting together this little cover plate that's going to be made out of uh, eighth inch aluminum. And it's uh, just covering sort of around where the throttle controls come through the center console. And uh, so it's two pieces there, that first piece in blue there, and then the other piece that sort of closes it out this way it can be sort of slid around the throttle arms. Uh, there's only really way of doing it. And in the center there is going to be the um, prop um, governor controller. And then these three little holes there, those are going to be the indicator LEDs for uh, the landing gear, for what position it's in. And they change color depending on, you know, whether it's up, down, or in uh, progress of, uh, or in transition. So that's um, something I'll be putting on the machine here uh, probably tomorrow, actually and uh, cutting that out and then we can get that all finished off and probably just going to brush it so it'd be like a brushed aluminum finish I think. And next up in the cabin was more work on the uh, pressurization system so Devin is here installing the controller for those outflow valves and we already had the hard points in there for that or at least the studs so he's just bolting that in and then uh, Jeff's been doing some more work on uh, getting the cowling sort of fitted there got the lower uh, aft section there and, and uh, fitting it up around that wheel that he cut out uh, last week. So uh, progress is being made there and uh, Devon's just clearing off the edge of the uh, the wing lower wing skin there so those uh, straight fences can go on. And oh, Devon also got uh, the plumbing done here, the little plastic tubing um, that connects those three different units together, the two outflow valves and the controller and with a few T's in there. So that's a, a job that's now done. And you can see Jeff's made it even more progress. So he's got the upper cowling uh, just temporarily fitted on there just to see how that's coming together. And now you're gonna be able to get sort of a real look of how the, the uh, fuselage sort of seems longer. And uh, as I was saying last week, I'm uh, working on uh, getting those um, hinge hangers there smoothed out on the inside because they were just water jet cut and they were too rough. For those bushings to run in so I'm just running them around on the machine and uh, smoothing them out and you can see one that hasn't been done yet and I don't know if you can see but it's a bit rough in there 
and uh, running on the machine is uh, doing a good job smoothing it out as you can see just taking off maybe I don't know three thousandths maybe um, just to smooth it out and then after I did that um, you'll see here in a second Devin just got on there with some uh, 320 sandpaper and then I believe some uh, 400 and just to smooth them out uh, a little more so they're sort of a bit more like a mirror image and uh, there you can see he's got that in the vise and he's been working on those so I had to do uh, all eight of those uh, to get them nice and smoothed out so the bushings will run nicely on them so that's what everyone was up to on Monday and moving on to Tuesday it was time to do a test fit of the right wing and it hasn't been closed out yet but we wanted to test it this way we could check um, that everything was going nicely and um, fitting nicely with the bushings and the bolts and all that sort of stuff before we actually closed out um, the lower skin so um, we set up some drums there to rest everything on so we didn't have to sort of hold it in the air while we were getting it aligned and didn't really have too many problems with it and to a little bit of um, sort of move, maneuvering around and the bushings lined up for the bolt and we got them in and uh, basically sitting there now so that drum there by where Devin's standing isn't actually holding any load at that point um, so uh, yeah, it's exciting to see that fitted you really get a feel of that size of the aircraft now and uh, the winglets are tall and up there but um, I think they're proportional to the aircraft it doesn't feel like they're too crazy big so this is a different angle there I'm standing up on the just a ways on the machine there so you can see how it looks from there and just to give you some more angles um, this is what it looks like from uh, up on top of the machine with the wide angle lens so it's starting to come together obviously the aileron's not on there and we don't have the uh, top surface on the strake there and this is how it looks from the front again with a wide angle lens and uh, you can see sort of how tall that strake looks I really think it looks in proportion and I don't think it looks too big at all um, anyway so that's how that looks and uh, just switching again angles this is again from uh, up on the machine but with a, just a regular lens on my camera so yeah I like it I think it looks good and it's going to look good when the rudders are on there and the ailerons on there so the next step with this one that wing will come off again and uh, we'll, we're ready to close that one out and we'll get the bottom skin bonded on and we'll be putting um, the uh, left wing on there next just doing the same thing making sure that it fits all nicely and the last thing I have to do is um, just secure in those uh, strain gauges into the left wing and that one's ready to close out as well and moving back onto the gear I wanted to show you how it looks now and how it operates now that I've made some more adjustments to it um, from what I showed you earlier so um, here it is going up and you can see it's still got that little bounce there I think what I need to do is get like a flow divider uh, just for the rear um, gear so it evenly flows both legs but I'm kind of concerned I've, I've been looking at some online I'm kind of concerned that um, some of those may may have a problem when it uh, that the um, hydraulic fluid flows back the other way that it may restrict it or do something weird so I may have to try that I'm not sure yet we'll see uh, anyway changing angles so you can see both legs or all three legs at once uh, this is kind of how it looks like when it's running on the up cycle so nose up first and then you see that little sort of wiggle there with the one uh, on the right hand side well the left hand from this view seems to go up smoothly and then the one on the right hand side has a hesitation where it sort of bounces a little bit and then goes up so I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that but it is uh, but anyway I think the flow uh, flow divider would fix that and there's the down cycle and it's still a get it seems to be that that one on the left side camera here always wants to go first and I need to think about this to be how it's plumbed there's just a T running down the back there to those so they should be fairly even and they're running the same gas strut on there and there you see the same thing hesitation on the right hand side where it sort of bops back down but 
either way it's running nice and smoothly it doesn't sort of jerk around and it's not a, it's not really violent or anything like that so i'd be quite happy um you know flying it the way it is i don't think it would be uh bad at all and it's not taking too long to go up or down um i think it's it's quite uh reasonable in terms of the speed um but you know like anything it's you kind of want to get it tuned um as best you can and here I'm showing the operation of the dump valve. So this is the case of um, the gears not working right. So I've actually gone and thrown the dump valve, which releases the pressure um, and basically equalizes it. And right now all I have to do is just tap on the, um, the down thing and all of a sudden it just releases it and the gas struts on the gear lock them into place. So that's working fairly well. And uh, Devin got these uh, hangers put back together there, on the, at least on the one side of the foreplane. And we've got the bushings in there. And uh, as you can see, it's rolling better now, much smoother than it was. But it's still going to be a bit of an experiment to see if this whole uh, elevator um, with the, these uh, sliding tracks there is going to work out for us. So uh, the next step here is to put the push rods in place, which means... Uh, you know cutting the holes in the um in the spar t so we can connect those push rods and then uh mounting the the rod ends there to uh, the elevator itself and seeing if it's going to operate the way um i'm hoping but we'll see and here's a slightly different angle there to see how that wing looks there now that's on and as i said that'll be coming off and getting closed out and then that's one wing down so um, the other wing will probably go on tomorrow and uh, back in the office here I've been working on putting these um, little circuits together um, that read the values off of those strain gauges so I've got three different uh, ones there that are going to get bonded into that one wing and each uh, sensor has its own little circuit on there and uh, as you can see and I've also um, been uh, just did the first one where there was some heat shrink as you can see there to protect that uh, when it's in the wing so that's our update uh, for the first half of this week and uh, thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again on Saturday and uh, see how things progress throughout the remainder of the week